Uh, so I'd like now to introduce our speaker for this evening. Our speaker for this evening is Brother Stephen J. Cole. Uh, Brother Cole served as a pastor for more than 40 years until his retirement in 2018. He is a firm advocate of verse-by-verse -verse expository preaching. And the result is that his sermon series functions much like verse-by-verse -verse commentaries, perfect for pastors seeking to bridge the gap between the text and audience. His printed and audio sermons, which are over 1,100 sermons, they are available on bible.org, precept-austin.org, and sermonaudio.org as well. His commentary series, 37 volumes, are available on Logos. His resources are a great blessing to pastors who love expository preaching. I'm sure that as he speaks today about expository preaching, we will all be challenged to grow in this area. So before we hand this, uh, the uh, stage over to uh, Brother Stephen, I'd like to ask Brother Dinesh to open us with a word of prayer. Sure. Lord, we look to you to speak to us through Brother Stephen, and we do pray that it will be a time of uh, edifying all of us, but at the same time, even as we network, uh, meet, uh, that we would be able to encourage and build each other up. Uh, Father, we uh, do look to, to you to encourage us, our hearts, that we may grow uh, in the passion of, of preaching your word, uh, explaining it and applying that text of scripture uh, to the people that you give us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Dinesh. And now I'd like to call our guest speaker for this evening, Brother Stephen J. Cole. Welcome to the stage. Thank you. One slight correction. My sermons are no longer on uh, Sermon Audio. Our church moved them from there to the church website, which is... Uh, F as in Flagstaff, C, F, Flagstaff Christian Fellowship. So it's FCF uh, online dot org, and then you can um, go to resources, and you'll see my name there, and you can click on them, and all the sermons are on there, both printed and audio. So um, I marvel at the uh, technology that I can join all of you a world away, and. Uh, uh, many, many years ago, back in the 1980s, I um, ran into a representative from Zondervan Publishing, and I asked him, how can I get my sermons published by Zondervan? And he told me, uh, you need to change your name to James Boyce or W.A. Criswell, because he said, those are the only guys we will publish. And... Uh, <laughs> So that was before the internet came out. So when it came out, I thought, well, at least I can put the sermons out of my drawer and out on the internet. And, uh, and then more recently, since I retired, I've been praying that the Lord would use me to mentor some younger pastors. And I was thinking of more locally. And then uh, Brother Stephen David there um, connected with me over the internet and so it's a, a joy to be able i hope to help um, some of you brothers who are younger than i am to grow in ministry and in um the knowledge of the lord the uh, equip indian churches brothers asked me to speak for about 15 minutes on two issues. First, what is expository preaching? And then second, why is it necessary? And um, then they submitted some questions that I will respond to after that. In its simplest form, expository preaching is simply explaining and applying a text of scripture in its context. Um, I had Dr. Haddon Robinson for preaching when I was in seminary way back when, uh, in the dark ages, before many of you were born, back in, in the late 1960s. And um, his definition is from his book, Biblical Preaching, expository preaching, he said, is the communication of a biblical concept derived from and transmitted through 
a historical, grammatical, and literary study of a passage in its context, which the Holy Spirit first applies to the personality and experience of the preacher, and then through him to his hearers. It's kind of a long definition, and um, I sent my printed notes to the, the brothers from Equip Indian Churches, and feel free to pass them on to anybody who wants to um, get the exact quote. I won't repeat it now. Um, more briefly, Dr. Robinson quotes Phillips Brooks, who was an American preacher back in the um, 19th century. He described preaching as truth poured through personality. And I would only modify that and say truth poured through godly personality or Christ-like personality. But my goal whenever I, I preach is always that when I'm done, people can, can look down at their Bible, at the text of scripture that I preached and say, you know, I now understand that text and I understand how it applies uh, to my life. Um, and Back in uh, the Old Testament in Nehemiah 8.8, 8, it relates to what happened when Ezra brought the law of God before the people and they had returned from Babylon. And Nehemiah 8.8 8 says, um, they read from the book, from the law of God, translating to give the sense so that they, the people, understood the reading. And I take it that's our goal when we teach the word, that people will understand what the Bible means and how it applies. John Calvin, in a, an excellent book called uh, Calvin's Preaching, which I um, highly recommend to you by um, T.H.L. Parker, if you can get it there, but it's just a great book. Um, Calvin said, when I expound Holy Scripture, I must always make this my rule, that those who hear me may profit from the teaching which I put forward and be edified unto salvation. And uh, that book explains how Calvin essentially brought about the Reformation in Geneva by just teaching through the scriptures verse by verse by verse. And um, it's incredible what the man accomplished in his short and very life. He suffered from a lot of illness and other problems. Um, another great preacher, I used to have his 20-some uh, volume set, 22 I think set, of um, biblical preaching, uh, Charles Simeon. He was an Anglican back in the late um, 18th, early 19th century, and uh, anything you can read about him is profitable, but he said that his aim in preaching was always threefold. Number one, to humble a sinner. Number two, to exalt the Savior. And then number three, to uh, promote holiness. And uh, that quote is in this book, which I also recommend, J.I. Packer's book, A Quest for Godliness, The Puritan Vision of the Christian Life. And uh, I've taken young men through that book about four times different groups and uh, he has an excellent chapter there on uh, Puritan preaching. As Dr. Robinson's um, definition states, to preach an expository sermon, the truth first has to be applied in the life of the preacher by the Holy Spirit. And uh, Calvin rather humorously made the point well, first, he made the point that the point of scriptures to reform our life, and then he humorously said, it would be better for the preacher to break his neck going up into the pulpit if he does not take pains to be the first to follow God. And so Calvin was making the point, of, we're hypocrites if we get up and proclaim something that just simply isn't true in our own lives. So first, we have to preach the word to ourselves and then to others. And um, I, I, that's one reason I'm going to advocate a little later in this time 
that you manuscript all your sermons, that is, write out the text of your message in full, because I've gone back to sermons I've preached years ago and um, reread my sermon. I thought, what did I say on that text? I forgot. But as I read it, the Spirit used it to convict me, to encourage me, to strengthen me through the Word, because it's the Word of God that feeds us and and builds us up in the faith. Um, we need expository preaching to respond to the second question. Um, we need it because God gave us the Bible book by book by book in written form, and he expects us to be able to understand it. Um, John 17, 17, and Jesus is, High Priestly Prayer, which is one of the most sacred um, chapters in Scripture to enter into our Savior's prayer as he faced the cross. But Jesus there prayed, sanctify them, his disciples, in the truth. And then he added, your word is truth. And in contrast, back in John chapter 8, he just declared that Satan is a liar and the father of lies. And as you all know, truth builds up people, lies destroy people. And the Lord, of course, wants our people to be built up in uh, faith and strong in him. And so Satan has been about continually from day one, it's even in the New Testament, attacking the truth. And a lot of the New Testament books were written to counter falsehood that Satan had already brought into uh, the churches, the book of Galatians, 2 Corinthians, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, and other books, 2nd Peter. They're all exposing the lies of false teachers and the ungodliness of them. And so one of the main jobs for a pastor, and I would use the word pastor slash elder synonymously, they're the same office, just different uh, titles. Uh, in Titus 1.9, it says that an elder is to hold fast to the faithful word, which is in accordance with the teaching, so that he may be able both to exhort in sound doctrine and to refute those who contradict. And so Paul's final charge, this is the la one of the last things Paul wrote before he was executed, uh, to Timothy. 2 Timothy 4, 1 through 5, should weigh continually on every pastor. Paul there wrote, I solemnly charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, uh, and by his appearing and by his kingdom, it's not as strong of an um, exhortation as he could give, and here's his exhortation, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with great patience and instruction. And then he explains, the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. I've always thought that was an interesting phrase. You have to endure sound doctrine. Uh, but wanting, he says, to have their ears tickled, they will accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance with their own desires and will turn away their ears from the truth, and will turn aside to myth. But you, be sober in all things, endure hardship, implication being, if you're going to preach the word, you're going to endure hardship. Do the work of an evangelist, so preach the gospel, in other words, and fulfill your ministry. And I began my ministry in Flagstaff with that text on my main mission and yours, my main mission is preach the word, yours is to hear the word and um, apply it to your life. As you know, in the end of Matthew, Matthew 24, in the Olivet Discourse, Jesus said that as the end of the age draws near, there's going to be increasing spiritual deception. He said it would cause many to fall away. Most people's love will grow cold. Um, he said, even the elect will be in danger of being led astray. And so the job of explaining and applying the whole 
a counsel of God, the word of God to the people of God uh, is more important here as we see the end of the age coming before us. In the book, The Quest for Godliness, J.I. Packer shows the prime importance of expository preaching for the Puritans in the chapter on Puritan preaching. He says that they saw preaching as an act of worship and as the prime means of grace to the church. And then he cites the great Puritan preacher, John Owen. Owen said, the first and principal duty of a pastor is to feed the flock by the diligent preaching of the word. This feeding, he said, is the essence of the office of pastor. And so we have to move that up into first priority in our ministries. It's the essence of our ministry. Now, expository preaching can cover something as broad as the whole Bible, although if you're going to preach the whole Bible in one message, you would be uh, undertaking quite a feat. But it can be very broad or it can narrow down to a single verse or a, uh, even a phrase. Our pastor here is ill this week, and so I'm going to fill in at the last minute for him tomorrow. And I'm just preaching on three verses from Luke 8 on Jesus calming the, the storm on the sea with the disciples when Jesus was asleep in the back of the boat. Um, so it can be that short. It can be a whole chapter. It can be a paragraph, which is, I think, the normal way is work through the Bible, through a book of the Bible, paragraph by paragraph by paragraph. And if you go online to one of the sources they mentioned, Bible.org or um, the Precept Austin site, and I think it's easiest to find my messages on Bible.org um, if you just type in my name there. But anyway, you'll see my example of preaching paragraph by paragraph through various books of the Bible. If your church is kind of biblically ignorant, in other words, they're, they're new believers, maybe coming out of um, a pagan background, you might find it helpful to just work through and preach an overview of every book of the Bible. Um, I think Mark never did that. Uh, I never did that. But um, you have to tailor it to the needs of your people and um, help them to grow in respect to salvation. So that's my opening um, thing on uh, what is expository preaching and its necessity.